Hello students, in the series of elements of electrical engineering, today in this session, let us discuss about the heating effects of electric current. Normally, electrical appliances will have an electric element. Whenever current flows through this heating element, heat will be dissipated in the element. A French scientist by name Joule conducted number of experiments on heat produced by electrical current. Finally, he gave a mathematical equation for the heat dissipation. This mathematical equation is famously known as Joule's law. In this class, we are going to see the following topics, Joule's law and its derivation, thermal efficiency, energy conversion formulas, problems on Joule's law, electrical appliances and their parts and wattages of different domestic electrical appliances. Correct. In this topic, let us see what is the effect of heat generated by electric current. Normally, any heating element is present in one form or other in all the electrical appliances. These heating element cause heat due to the friction of electronics whenever current flows through an heating element. This is the statement goes like this. The transformation of electrical energy into heat to overcome the frictional resistance in a conductor is called the heating effect of electric current or famously known as Joule's law. Joule's is a French scientist who he has conducted number of experiments on this heat generated by electric current and finally concluded some of the useful mathematical equation. The Joule's law says the heat generated in a conductor is proportional to 1 the square of the current passing through the conductor, the resistance of the conductor, time for which the current is passed through the conductor. Mathematical formula goes like this heat generated in a conductor is equal to I square R T by J, where J is a proportionality constant and it is equal to mechanical heat. Thermal efficiency. Thermal efficiency is defined as the ratio of heat actually utilized to the total heat produced electrically. Thermal efficiency can be mathematically formulated like this. Thermal efficiency is equal to heat utilized by heat produced. Heat produced is equal to mathematical formula is V into I into T by J, where V is the applied voltage, I is the current passing through the conductor, T is the time taken and J is the Joule's constant. Heat utilized the formula given like this, M S theta, where M is the mass of the material, S is the specific heat of the material theta is the rise in temperature that also can be written as like that m into s into theta 2 minus theta 1 m is the mass s is the specific heat theta 2 minus theta 1 is the rise in temperature or change in temperature some of the useful conversion formulas in doing the problems are 1 kilowatt hour normally Electrical energy is measured in kilowatt hours. 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 36 into 10 to the power of 5 joules. 1 calorie is equal to 4.186 joules. Normally, thermal energy is measured in kilocalories. That is why 1 kilocalorie is equal to 4. 1186 joules. 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 860 kilocalories. This formula is useful for converting electrical energy into thermal energy. The one which you are seeing is this is electrical energy 
and this is mechanical energy, this is electrical energy and this is thermal energy. So, these formulas are useful for conversion of energies into various forms. We will solve some of the problems as an examples of Joule's law and based on Joule's law. First example let us take like this, the heater of an electric kettle has a resistance of 100 ohms and the applied voltage is 250 volts. Calculate the time taken to rise the temperature of 1 liter of water from 15 degree centigrade to 90 degree centigrade. Assume the efficiency of kettle to be 85 percent and specific gravity of the water to be 1 and water equivalent of kettle is equal to 100 grams. Always whenever you are doing a problem, you should write first the given data and convert, convert that given data into required data. In the formula, a required units are there, you have to convert the given data into the required data. So, in the, in the problem, the given data goes like this, mass of the water is equal to 1000 grams, that the required form is 1 kg resistance of the kettle is equal to 100 ohms, applied voltage is equal to 250 volts. The rise of temperature that is from 15 degrees to 19 degrees or the change in temperature is 90 minus 15 that is equal to 75 degrees centigrade. The efficiency of the kettle is given as 85 percent. When you talk about percentage and you convert it, it, it becomes 0.85 water equivalent of the kettle. This is an important thing that is to be noted. This water equivalent means whenever you heat a vessel, first the vessel takes the heat and then the heat is transferred to the water. So, we require water equivalent of this kettle which is given as 100 grams. When you convert it into required data or that is 0 0.1 kg. As usual, Joule's constant is 4200 joules per kilo calorie. Now, let us solve the problem. The formula given heat taken by water is equal to m into s into theta, where m is the mass, s is the specific gravity, theta is the rise in temperature. The water heat, water is heated up from 15 degrees to 90 degrees, then mass of the water is 1 kg specific gravity of water is 1 and the rise in temperature is 75. It comes out to be 75 kilo calories. Similarly, you have to take care of this heat taken by the kettle, heat taken by the kettle and the mass of the kettle is water equivalent we have taken as 0 0.1 kg and specific of the specific heat of the vessel is 1 and 75 is the rise in temperature. So, it is 7.5 the total heat taken by the kettle and water is 75 plus 7.5 that is equal to 82.5 kilo calories. As per Joule's law, heat produced electrically is equal to I square R T by J. I is the current, R is the resistance, T is the time taken, J is the Joule's constant. Similarly, in the de given data, he has given resistance and he has given voltage, we have to find the current. Current passing through the kettle is equal to voltage by resistance. Voltage given as 250 volts and resistance is given as 100 ohms. So, the current is 2.5 amperes. When we put all this data in the Joule's law, that is heat produced according to Joule's law is equal to I square, that is 2.5 square into R, that is 100 and the time T by Joule's law 4200. This T we have to find out. In the problem, he has asked you to calculate the time taken to rise the temperature from 15 degrees to 90 degrees. The actual heat produced is equal to efficiency you have to take. That means, the kettle is not transferring 100 percent efficient. That, that means, it is not transferring 100 percent heat to the water 
the efficiency of kettle is given as 85 percent that can be written as 0.85 into the heat produced. So, this is the actual heat produced and this is the efficiency of the kettle. So, heat produced is equal to heat taken. Already we have calculated total heat taken, we have calculated heat produced. Let us equate these two 0.85 into 2.5 square, this is the resistance 100, this is the time taken by joules constant and heat taken is 82.5 kilo calories. So, it comes out to be 652 seconds. You can write like this or you can convert this into minutes and seconds. Time taken T is equal to 10 minutes and 52 seconds. There are innumerable electrical appliances which are using the heating effect of electric current. Commercially, industrial heating, welding, space heating and electrical installation protections are the some of the examples. Let us see some of the domestic electrical appliances and the most familiar example is filament lamps. Normally, these filament lamps we call it as uh, tungsten filament lamp, we call them as incandescent lamps. The technical term for these lamps is incandescent lamps. These lamps are classified into various types depending on the material used for the filament. Normally, there are two types of filament lamps, one is carbon filament lamp, the other one is metal filament lamps. Again in this metal filament lamps, there are again two types, vacuum type and gas filled type. Carbon, carbon filament lamps are generally used for heating purposes, whereas metal filament lamps are used for lighting purposes. Metal filament lamps have tungsten or tantalium filaments. Tungsten filament lamps have the following properties. Usually, we will see these tungsten filament lamps in our houses, which are commonly known or commercially known as lamps, but the technical name is incandescent lamps. So, why we have taken this tungsten as the filament? The tungsten has very important electrical properties and thermal properties. The melting point of a tungsten material is 3600 degrees centigrade and the working temperature of this tungsten filament is 2000 degrees centigrade. Vapor pressure is low. The tungsten filament lamp we use vapors and the pressure is very low. So, they are mechanically strong. The temperature coefficient of resistance of this tungsten is 0 0.00051, very, very less. The luminous efficiency of the tungsten filament lamps is 10 lumens per watt. That is why we have selected this tungsten as the filament material and this is one of the famous commercial bulb what we see outside or everywhere in our houses. Let us see what are the various parts of these filament lamps. Normally, the bulb will have a glass cover or it is enclosed in a glass bulb and this is the coil or filament or the material used for this coil is tungsten. This is glass which is covering this filament and all these things. These are glass stems. Supply is given here that supply is carried through this filaments. Those are called leads. Those are called leads and brass and aluminum cover or color glass is given. Normally, we see aluminum here this is made up of aluminum and they will provide two pins for phase and neutral. These are the two, two pins and these are called as contact points. The next electrical appliances is space heater. Space heaters are used to keep the room warm during severe cold session. For heating of the room, generally we use space heaters. 
they basically consists of heating unit and reflector unit. Room heater consists of porcelain or china clay bars over which fine nichrome wire is wound. The back of the heating element is a concave shaped and inner surface is coated with chromium plate to reflect the heat. This is commonly known as reflector. The heat produced by the coil is properly reflected towards the room and this is the reflector is used for reflecting the heat. Now, we can see the figure of the room heater. So, the one which you are seeing here is this is a concave shape and it is coated with a chromium and these are the coils and these are the two end connectors are supply is given to this and the current passes through this coil and heat is generated. This coil is wound on a porcelain base. So, over this porcelain base coil is wound and heat is produced the heat is reflected with the help of this concave shape one and the room gets heated up. The other electrical appliances normally we will see we see in our houses is electrical kettle. Electrical kettle is a domestic appliances used for heating purposes and preparing tea, coffee etcetera. It is made up of a container, a container is made up of steel or some other material it has two chambers. The container is having two chambers. The upper chamber is for fitting with water and the lower chamber is for the element. Inside chamber will have heating element and the outside in the outside chamber we will put water. So, that the heat produced in the element is transferred through this chamber to the water. The heating element used in a electric kettle is nichrome wire embedded between two mica sheets. This is the electrical kettle what we see in our houses. Let us see the figure of this electrical kettle. It is something like jug, a insulated handle is there in the inside chamber there are two chambers this chamber will put water and this chamber will put heating element this is the heating element so under the heating elements at the base we will put asbestos sheet a plug socket to give supply we have a socket here this is called container over this we have a top lid to close that one this is an electric kettle. Electric iron. An electric iron is used to press the clothes. Electric iron consists of a sole plate made up of cast iron that is called bottom plate which is made up of smooth and nickel plated. The top of the plate is also made smooth and has two vertical bolts mounted over, over it for fitting and all those things. The heat element is made up of nichrome wire sandwiched and riveted between the two mica sheets. Mica sheet has the special property of thermal conduction. So, heat produced by this nichrome wire will effectively transfer to the base plate by these mica sheets. Mica sheets purpose is it is, is also a insulator a good electrical insulator. So, this base plate which is made up of iron will not get short circuited due to this mica plates. Mica plate prevents electrical short circuit at the same time it transfers heat effectively. The ends of the elements are passed through a small porcelain beads and are connected to the leads of power socket. So, for giving supply to this nichrome electrical heating element. So, they take out in the form of porcelain beads well insulated these porcelain beads are insulators that wire is taken out for giving supply. This is the 
non automatic electric iron which we see in our houses. The latest version and uh, the weight is uh, reduced, automation, automation is done in this electrical ions. So, this is the electrical ion and the one which you are seeing is this is the mica sheet and inside these are two mica sheet, you can see two mica sheets here. In between there is a nichrome wire, this it is like this in a zigzag shape that produces heat that heat is transferred through this mica sheets to the base plate. These are the parts of the electric ion, this is the cover, this is the insulated handle, this is the base plate, base plate over that base plate this is the cover is there, this is the handle. So, parts of the electrical ion can be seen like this, it consists of three major parts, this is base plate where you fit the heating element and all those things. Sole plate made up of cast iron, heating element is made up of nichrome placed between mica sheets. This is a rest frame over which asbestos sheet is placed, so that heat is not transferred to the handle or the upper portion and the heat is only reflected towards the base plate, cover, socket, this is the pin, pins provided and you can plug in supply here. So, this is insulated handle. Electric heater, electric heater is used for heating purposes. It consists of nichrome heating element mounted over a porcelain base. The leads of the elements are brought out through two terminals and connected to the power socket. The porcelain plate has the grooves to house the heating element. Normally, this is the electric heater and this is the porcelain base and the wire which you are seeing the spring like material is the heating element which is made up of nichrome wire. These are the two supply. So, whenever you put a vessel over this one this nichrome wire will not have any direct contact with the vessel. So, you do not get a shock or something like that. These are all the parts of a electric heater. So, this cover is made up of metal sheet, this is heating element is put in this grooves, socket for the supply, this is porcelain base, that porcelain base will have grooves in that grooves we will put heating element. These are all some of the electrical appliances which works on heating principle. This is soldering iron, normally we see it in electronics labs for soldering various electronic components to the PCB. This is the tip where it gets actual heat, in this you have a heating element and this is a wooden handle so that you you can uh, you need you won't get heat transferred from this metal to so that is why they have used this wooden and this is the socket power socket and uh, generally these soldering ions of 25 watts 50 watts are available for soldering purposes geyser is one of the useful electrical apparatus which produces heat and normally these geysers are fitted in our bathroom for heating the waters. It consists of a cylindrical tank of 10 to 50 liters, it ranges are there, it may go from 10 liters to 50 liters. The tank is kept closed completely from all side except inlet and outlet. Water is put inside the container through inlet and water is taken out through outlet. The inlet is directly coupled to the water pipeline, the outlet is coupled to the tap or shower and where you can draw the water. Geysers are installed normally in bathrooms. This is one of the commercial heaters that are available in our market, these are the inlets, inlet 
and outlet is at the bottom. Now, let us see the various parts of the geyser. This is the inlet and this is the outlet. The water which is going inside is the cold water and the water is coming outside the geyser is the hot water. It contains a chamber where we put the water in a heating element and everything. Normally, they use copper container inside the chamber and a steel container outside the chamber. We have a thermostat which senses the temperature whenever the water gets temperature or whenever the water gets the required temperature, this thermostat senses and switches off the supply and there will not be any further increase of temperature. Heating elements are kept inside well insulated, so that this water will not get the current or it is not short circuited due to this water. Supply is given here and water is getting heated up. Once the it reaches the required temperature, it switches off the supply and you can open the tap and you can take out the hot water. Power consumption of all electrical appliances will depend on the wattage or power rating of the appliance and the time of usage of the electrical appliances. Now, let us note the wattage of commonly used domestic appliances. So, normally one should have understanding of the wattages of electrical appliances. These are all the domestic appliances and their wattages, the power taken by them. Electric ion generally depends on the type of electric ion, it varies from 500 watts to 1000 watts. Electrical kettle, the power rating is around 200 to 1000 watts. Space heaters, 200 to 1000 watts. Geysers, generally they range from 750 watts to 1000 watts. The radio set which we are using in our houses takes very little power that is 40 to 60 watts. The ceiling fan, it depending on the sweep and type of the blades, it ranges from 60 to 100 watts. Normally, normal fans will range from 60 to 70 watts. The television black and white television generally takes around 100 watts and a color television takes around 150 watts. The refrigerator, that fridge which we use in our houses will take 500 watts. And the electrical cooker for cooking the rice and all those things will take 750 watts to 1500 watts. Washing machines for washing the clothes and everything, they will take a power of 150 watts to 200 watts. So far, we have seen heating effects of electric current, Joule's law, problems based on Joule's law, derivation of Joule's law and some of the domestic electrical appliances. So, goodbye until we meet again. Further clarification, contact the additional secretary, State Board of Technical Education and training, 7th floor, BRKR Bhavan, Tank Bund Road, Hyderabad, 5000063, fax 0403220010.